Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act. Hat on, suit on, looking like a champion. Hat on, suit on, looking like a champion. Like a million bucks, but I'm things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be but Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. They're listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Everybody, you are listening to the voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Man, oh man, oh man. Whew. Hey, uh, you know, today I, j- I just want to say something, um, um, that I don't think I've ever shared this way before. Um, the, 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 the title is very simple. And that is, it's been worth it to me. You know, I, I, <laughs> I just, I just kept thinking that this morning, that it's all been worth it to me. And what I mean by that is this relationship that I have with my heavenly father, it's been worth it to me. I, I, I can't even tell you the value that it has had in my life. I, I I can't tell you how it's helped me to understand not only my purpose, but to better understand my past. That's 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 critical, man. Because I, I'm I'm grateful for that because so many people can't get beyond their past an event, a set of circumstances, some calamity that besets them. Maybe it's been grief, something. But it ties so many people up. It's been so worth it to me. It it, it man, it it's it's been worth having someone to go to when no one else was there. Do you do you understand what I'm saying? It has it has given me a place to go when no one else has been there. Oh, hey man, we pulling for you. Hey man, hang in there. Hey man, keep your head up. All of that. But I gotta tell you, man, you get yourself in some circumstances and situations in this thing called life when no one can help you but God. When the only person that could possibly understand or know what you're feeling is God. The only person that'll sit there with you through it all and understand everything about it has been God. It's been worth it to me, man. It's It's been worth it to me. It's been the biggest improvement in my life. 
I mean, man, as as I look back over my life, man, forming a strong bond with God has been the most beneficial thing to me. You know, these things you read in your in in your in 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 writings in in the Bible or 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 whatever you're reading. You know, when you when you read scriptures and things of that nature, it, it it's it's been around a long time. It holds so much truth to it. I mean, man, it's like, how could this have been written so long ago and still pertain directly to today? I mean, that that's amazing. That is amazing to me. That I mean, that has to be God at work to have written something so complete, so dead on point. That if you read it today, it means exactly what pertains to today. That's amazing, man. That that's why my 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 spiritual walk, it's just worth it to me. And I keep saying it's worth it because if you sitting out there and you tripping like I was tripping, decide nah, let me do it. I got a few more things I want to do, a couple more girls I wanna holler at. Couple more things I want to get into. I got a couple more deals I want to do. I got a little bit more dirt I want to roll up on me a little bit first for I, man, I wish I had known. I really wish I had understood exactly what forming a relationship with God would do for me. It's been worth every person who out there who hate know me that don't even know me. It's because I have a relationship with him that I'm fine with that. I don't care for it, but it ain't going to stop me, though. See, because I know for a fact that haters make you greater. I know for a fact that haters validate your your mere existence. I know for a fact that half of them is out of envy and jealousy because of something you're doing that they wish they could do or they want credit for. So they just, nah, anything, all that, bam. And now you just all over the place with people. Man, I'm so grateful for this relationship that it has not allowed outside influences that do not have my best interests at heart to, to throw me off course. It, it, it has just been worth it. And if you're sitting out there and you're wondering about the benefits of it, I, I can't even tell you what it's like to know that when bad things are happening to me, the calming peace that I feel that I know that that's going to be all right, too, that I know that this, too, shall pass, that I know in my heart of hearts, man that there's got to be a reason for this. And if I can just hang on in there, he going to unfold that for me and he going to let me see it. But the number one thing I always know is I'm going to survive this one too, that this too shall pass. It has been worth it to me, man, to, to, to have this thing called faith, which is the belief in things that you cannot see. And to know, man, along the way that, oh my goodness, man, even though I don't know what's next, or even I'm not really sure about the next step. I do know for a fact that some more is coming. I do know for a fact, it is a fact that God will take care of me. It is a fact that he will never ever leave me or desert me. If I just stay here where I'm supposed to be, he's coming. The Calvary's coming over the hill. He coming over the hill and when he come over that hill, he gonna wipe out all this mess down here that's that's trying to hurt me. That that I don't have to worry about my enemies anymore. That my enemies that are all around you can surround me. You can shoot all the arrows you want. Now it's not to say that none of them ain't gonna come close, and I ain't gonna say that you know I ain't gonna be a little under some pressure, a little nervous about being shot at so hard. But at the end of the day, I know this for sure. Ain't none of them going to stick in me. You can shoot them, but ain't none of them going to stick in me. No matter what you do, no weapon formed against me. Nothing. You can't, you can't do nothing with me, man. I'm, I'm so cool. It's been worth it for me. Man.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Wake up, wake up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is the Steve Harvey Morning Show, and it's that great getting up morning. It is Monday morning. You know, everybody always say Monday's a bad thing. Monday's not a bad thing. I think we look at it the wrong way. Monday is a good thing, and it is October the second. We we in October. Y'all know that, don't you? Y'all know yes, that, don't you? Know. It's Libra Y'all know season. we in the yes, middle. Of, we we in, it, it's October. What? What? If I just make it through January, February, Lord, I can march on through the April and May. Mm, I love mm, that. Mm, that's the way my grandma would put it. <laughs> yes. It is October. Thanksgiving around the corner. Christmas around the way. We're coming up on it. Uh, 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 Halloween is this month. If that's something you you into, you know, uh-uh. it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And uh, call of a birth, call of a birthday is this month. It's coming. You, it's coming. You better say that up there with them holidays. You better listen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we are in the midst of October, and things are. We are hopefully here in, in the state of Texas. We can, you know, maybe Texas will realize that it is October and start to cool off a little bit. Can we? Can we get out <laughs> of the eighties <laughs> and the nineties? Can we? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody. Let Texas know that it's October. Please. They do. didn't get the memo. <laughs> Nobody got it. All right. Top of the morning, Uncle Steve is out, but the crew is here. It is me, nephew Tommy, holding it down along with the beautiful Shirley Strawberry, Carla Farrell, Mississippi Monica, and the one and only Kia Lawan Space. What? Killer One. Killer One. Is that Uncle Steve called Killer yeah. One? Yeah. Top man. of the morning. Everybody What's had a good, good weekend? Everybody? Busy, yeah. booked and busy. What about you? What about mm-hmm. you? I went and hung out at Texas Southern University. It was their homecoming. <laughs> okay. 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 And when you want to talk about some real tailgating. Uh-huh. HBCU. HBCU baby. know how to tailgate. You hear me? Yes, we do. Yeah. It's barbecue mm-hmm. every 10 steps. It is barbecue. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. a tent, an RV, barbecue, beautiful ladies. And a lot of fall, a lot of fall, a lot of napkins. <laughs> <laughs> and coolers, coolers, a lot of Many coolers. coolers. Yes, yes. And ain't nobody at the game. They all tailgate. It's, it's, <laughs> some ama- it's amazing to me. But I had a blast, hung out with some fraternity brothers, my cousins. And uh, it was good. Good to be around. Nah, it, it's just, just beautiful black you know, people, man. Yeah, I love it. You know, it's probably about the best TSU you could do. You, uh, you've had a great time, huh? but you have not gone to a Prairie View A&M Woo, you uh, tell a homecoming. Uh, that was nice. That was wonderful what they did over there in Third Ward. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. But you better mm-hmm. get on down there to Prairie View and show. Oh, I, yeah. You better tell them, Carla. You better, you better show how we do it down there. I'm okay. talking about 250,000 strong. We play oh, no yeah. games when they no games on okay. homecoming. Okay, Stand okay. Out. You know how we well, let get me say this to y'all. you people get with it. Man, coming. let me right. say this to y'all, though. Magic right. City is coming up, and I have been there before. Mm-hmm. When you go to Birmingham, Alabama, we been boy, there. Yeah. That, I'm just boy. telling y'all now. That's yeah. some tailgating. That's some, whoa, that's yeah. some outstanding Parades food they got. You right. You right. <laughs> the party. I'm just trying to tell you. RV don't even, man, I'm going to tell you something. Don't nobody sleep. Ain't no sleeping at homecoming. No. 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 No, no. Yeah. That's that All HBCU right, uh, pride. <laughs> Coming up in 32 yeah. minutes after the hour, we'll hear from the nephew again as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now to run that prank back with the nephew. Nephew, what you got this morning? You've been wearing my clothes. You've been wearing my clothes. Let's go get dope. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to read, uh, Wilson. Yeah, this will. Hey, you, 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 you own the cleaners over on, right? Yeah, that's me. How may I help you? How, how, how long y'all been over there? How, how, how many, how many years y'all been over there on the, uh, on Man, we've been here for, we've been here about 15 years, man. I've been here a long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. How may I help you? Uh, no, you, you the only, uh, my name Donnie, man. I'm sorry. My name Donnie. Donnie. You, is you the, nice, you nice the, uh, you, you, all, you always been the owner there? Man, I started this thing, what, about 15 years ago? Got all my own equipment, everything. We do everything in-house, so you ain't got to worry about going nowhere. You got the clothes off here, and I made sure we take care of everything right here in-house, man. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, l- l- listen, man, the reason why I call, uh, see, I've been, uh, I've been, I-, I actually been bringing my clothes to you for about a year now. My name, my name is Donnie. Oh, you have? Donnie. Donnie, huh? I, I don't, 
I don't remember. I, I know I would be coming here. I know your face though. Yeah, I, yeah. I ain't you, no you, you, you probably know me when you see me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you probably you probably know when you see. Me. But listen, uh, here's where I had a problem. And I came in uh, about last week. Sometime I came in. I think it was last Thursday. I came in to get my clothes. I had dropped off, and uh, now now I had brought some clothes probably about three weeks before that. Uh huh. And and when I got home, uh, three you know, like I said, three weeks before when I got home with that with them clothes, I realized. I was missing a shirt, and uh, and I was like, I don't, I don't know where my shirt at. I couldn't find. It. So now, just last week when I came back to pick up some clothes, uh-huh. now and, and this what 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 you know, I didn't want to raise no no havoc in your in your store or nothing. But what what I looked when I looked at you, you was actually the person that took my money and gave me my, gave me my clothes. Uh-huh. But when I when I looked closer at you, I realized you you actually had on my shirt. What? No. You had I, I had to go on and count to ten. I went on out to my car and I said I'm not gonna wait and calm down. But you was actually standing there, giving me my clothes, <laughs> but you had on my shirt too. Now you, bro, you could have counted to twenty. You, you ain't seen me in your shirt. I mean, or what? It, what, what? 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 Have your clothes? Have you ever left your clothes up here longer than thirty days? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What? 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 Is, what, what are you saying? If, if people leave their stuff longer than thirty days, you start wearing it. No, now hold on, hold on. I, I, I ain't wore nobody's shirt. Let, uh, no, 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 let's no, no, no. Hold on, bro. Hold on, Donnie. We, we quit Donnie. all this lying about you. You ain't wore nobody's shirt because you so your hands. Well, l- l- listen, let me tell you something, man. I mean, I work every day. I work hard, and I can buy my own. I can buy my own shirt. I mean, I ain't got to wear nobody's shirt. As a matter of fact, I was just saying because you said. That, that that you felt like I held your shirt. I, I ain't worn nobody's shirt, but okay. Well, now I got a partner coming there. The only time something come up missing there. is if it's been here thirty days. We don't. I mean, we ain't we ain't taking nobody's clothes. All right, but listen, I got a friend. He bring his stuff over there too, and he tell me he had some pants missing, and he and he come in there one day and swear he think you had his pants on. Who is it? He lied. Let, let me tell you. Hold on, bro. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't well, know. You done, you done, you done, you done I, I don't know man. who you are. Made an outfit out of clothes. You got my shirt on and his pants on. This is ridiculous, man. Are you is you creating your own wardrobe with people's stuff? Look, hold, 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 hold on. Let me tell you something, man. I done told you I don't wear nobody else's shirt. Don't call me and insult my integrity. Tell me I don't want somebody else's shirt. I don't have to wear your shirt. I got my own shirt. What kind of cleaners you got, man? That you clean people's stuff, but then you wear it around the cleaners. I don't have to wear a thing or nobody around no cleaners. I got my own. You have you. You must not been up here yourself. Do you see the uniforms we wear up here? That's how you know my name. Say Wilson on my uniform, man. I know it say Wilson on it, but why well, is you, ain't you see me wearing with... other people's stuff, Mister Wilson? Look here, man. Look here. I'm a Christian, bro. Listen, I'm trying to do the right thing. I don't appreciate nobody calling me. Now, you can tell you, you you can inquire, and we can f- get this fixed. You know, figured out. But you don't call here saying that you seen me wearing well, I'm gonna go shirt. On. I'm going to let this shirt go. Yeah? I'm going to yeah, let this I shirt go. I don't care go. what the hell I'm you do with this shirt. No, 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 Mr. Will. That's what I'm going to do with you. If I come in there, if I come in there one more time and see you with one of my shirts on, then guess what? I'm going to tear it off for you and I'm going to beat your at your store. <laughs> Let me tell you what. You bring your bad down here. Come on down here. Let me just, let me, it ain't a thing in a drugstore gonna kill you quick and I will about coming here trying to bother me about a shirt. Well, you need to quit wearing people's stuff then. I ain't gotta wear no other clothes, boy. So, but that's what you're doing. You up in there, you got on my shirt and got my boy pants on. I tell you what, let me tell you something. B- before I open this cleaner, I'm from the penitentiary. And when you talk, when you call somebody a lie, you better rather back it up. I, I don't need to come look, up in there this and ain't tell what you your look, 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 man. You keep wearing everybody's clothes in there. Let me tell you something. I'm telling you what God loves me. I'm telling you the truth. If you come up here with some you need to call your mama and let her know it's going to be some snot slinging and flower bringing. Because just like that shirt you say you missing, you're going to be missing too. You come up here bothering about a shirt. You're going to get your butt beat if I keep finding out you wearing people's stuff. Look at your Wilson. Don't, don't get your butt beat up on, on you hear me? I tell you what, you need to get off my phone. I, boy, this baby, this, this time out, I'm wearing his shirt. You is wearing my shirt, and you wearing my friend's pants. Man, you, look, bro, look, Donnie McClurkin, I don't, Donnie, whoever you, I don't know who Donnie you are, but don't call him no more, man. I don't even want your business, man. You don't even have to, don't bring your shirt. I, a matter of fact, what's your last, I'm going to look your smile up. Any day, any money you don't spend, I'm going to give it back to you. I don't need your money either, man. I don't need this I got one more thing to say to you. Is you listening to me? What? You ain't got a thing to say to me. I do have something I need to say to you. You're thieving, t- shirt wearing. I do have something I need to say to you. I, what? Is you listening? What? This is nephew Tommy.
Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy. Who? <laughs> hey, Mr. Wills, this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your boy got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> boy, that ain't. <laughs> Say, <laughs> say, bro, you can't. Hey, we're in a recession. You can't call nobody talking <laughs> to him like that, man. <laughs> Ooh, boy, y'all some food, man. Boy, I'm gonna have to go somewhere and sit down, man. I'm gonna have to drink me some teaspoon of vinegar or something. <laughs> got my blood pressure sky. <laughs> well, I know that. I knew it had to be some my line, man, because I ain't want nobody a shirt, man. <laughs> Hey, man, I got to ask you, man. I got to tell me y'all got us on in the, inside the cleaners in the morning. Tell me this. What is the baddest radio show in the land? You already know the Steve Harvey Morning Show, baby. <laughs> mm, there you have it. Thank you, back. nephew. Coming up next, it is Ask the Riddle of You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, an arrest has been made in the murder of Tupac. Finally, uh, the Swifties are being accused of sending death threats to Travis Kelsey's ex-girlfriend and the longest serving female senator in history. Diane Feinstein has died at the age of 90. That is all coming up at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the Riddolo and Junior. Riddolo, of course, standing for ready to love officer, meaning nephew Tommy. So... <laughs> Here we go. Carlissa in Jackson writes, my husband, my sister's husband is notorious for sending the wrong emojis when he texts. Um, for years, we laughed at him. Well, yesterday he sent me a happy birthday text with a heart eyes emoji and a kissy face emoji. And my sister saw his text. She called and questioned me. Was I wrong for not telling her about that text? Hmm. Well, I mean, if he does this all the time, I would have done it just because that's my sister. I'd have made sure we, hey, your husband has sent something crazy over here again and then made a joke out of it. At least that way, at least I put it out there, you know, but I would I would have definitely said something because that's your sister and that's her ignorant ass husband that don't know how to send text messages. So, yeah, go oh. ahead and say something. If everybody know about it, just say, hey, your husband had it again. He didn't me the, sent the uh, wrong kind of text. And at least she knows. That's just, mm -hmm. you know, from the real love. Courtesy. Uh -huh. Yeah, from okay. the real love. Not from, not from nephew Tommy. Take your husband's damn phone. He don't need to be sending no text messages no more at all. <laughs> put him on Put him on text probation. Mm. Junior. <laughs> Junior. I, I, don't, I don't see the problem here, but uh, y'all mad because he got the emoji right. Now y'all mad at him. He, he was sending the wrong emoji, but he put them hard eyes on there. He got that right. He figured that part out. <laughs> Uh -huh. So, but no, nah, he shouldn't be sending text messages to to your sister in law like that. He shouldn't do that. No, nah, he shouldn't be sending that. Just say happy birthday and move on. You gotta <laughs> yeah. put no emoji with it. Happy birthday, move on. Cause you know you can't be doing all that. Come on, now. All I right. quit sending some too, Shirley. You know, you know, if you try to say how you doing, mm -hmm. if you uh -huh. know you type in how, you can accidentally hit the e and it say ho. You uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? It, it, and you can really send a really yeah. different kind of message. Yeah. You gotta be yeah. careful. Yeah. Proofread, yeah. proofread before really? you send anything. Really? And what's the emoji you... with that mistake? <laughs> what hoe you doing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Moving on to Journey in D.C. Journey says, I bought a condo and my neighbor below me is a light sleeper and she complained that she can hear me having sex at night. I was purposely as loud as I could be after that and I mm. got fined. Do I pay the fine or fight for my right to have loud sex? I mean, she owns a condo. What's the problem? You might have to figure out how to how to muffle this sound and put a, put some more carpet down or something to try to snuff this out, baby. Uh -huh. I don't know what you're doing in there, but you and that boy is in that clown. Y'all getting it in. But the lady downstairs probably stayed by herself, and she ain't getting it in, so she actually jealous at the same time. So you got to, and you rubbing it in. So you up there, now y'all up there when the 44 chicken wing, just, okay, a lot of folk don't know what that is. Y'all yeah. up in there in that 44 chicken wing making a whole lot of noise. And I know what you're doing. And now you stomping on the floor, y'all jumping around the room. Y'all getting it in like Ben Rains is getting it in. Y'all remember, remember that? That's that, that's that, Baby that's boy. that 44 chicken wing. That's that <laughs> straight up 44 chicken wing. And they jumping around the room. That's what you're doing. I know what you're doing. It's a beautiful thing. It's good. Not you're Baby Boy. Not shit. Ben Rains. Yeah. <laughs> So should she pay the fine or should she fight for her you right to, to have You got to pay the fine. Sex? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're overdoing it. she fight? 
Because she obviously I, wants to do what she wants to do, and that's have loud sex. Y'all need to care that outside. Go out in the backyard with all this. <laughs> they in a condo. Yeah. Yes. Man, you got that she owns. <laughs> well, go out Junior. on the patio. I, I mean, is it somewhere else we can go to, to let this sound go She's to a different direction? She's inside her home. Yeah. Junior. <laughs> well, well, I'm with time out. They need to go somewhere. Like, you know, you need to go to like a resort or something like that. Get out. You can't what? Yeah, pay the fine. Yeah, you, you want to have loud sex, they're going to fine you every time. Now, these fines going to add up. You can be quiet for real because your money's going <laughs> to. Now you can be in here. <laughs> Don't open your mouth. Either that or get some sound dampening. The same stuff we got in the studio. Put, put that in your house. You need some sound uh, dampening. That's what you need. Yeah, you soundproof your house. Because y'all doing good, too much. Now good loving is hard to hold in. It's yeah. hard to hold in. <laughs> oh, it's hard to hold it in. She needs to sell hold her in. condo. She needs yeah, to get she needs out. to move. <laughs> but every time somebody I'll hit you, that's 500. You be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> quiet. <laughs> That's, that's the sound of trying to hold it in. <laughs> that's louder than a loud sex. I know. <laughs> All right, here we go. Moving on to Sanji in um, Charleston. Sanji says, uh, I met an old friend for drinks and we went to his hotel room and had sex. I didn't know his wife was coming into town, so I showed up the next night hoping for a repeat. I played it off like I was lost, but wh why didn't he warn me that she was coming? Wow. Now, he's stupid. Stupid. Yeah. Good. He stupid. So you get, you went back to the same room, knocked on the door. Did, I mean, how far did we go with this? Did, when did she see her? That, this boy's stupid. And it's the mm -hmm. same room, too? Mm -hmm. Same hotel? All of he's that. All of stupid. that. Yeah, uh, so, but you shouldn't have went back with I called it. Exactly. You should not have gone uh, back with I called it. She just showed you, up, yeah. Yeah, you just showed up like, oh, it was just too good. I got to get me another. Uh-uh, you should have showed up, made sure it was good, the coast was clear, and maybe you could have got lucky again, but the wife But he didn't time. call her. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's why what she are you calling him for? Yeah. You shouldn't have shown up. <laughs> show up. Right. You got your so feelings you, hurt with that. Yeah. yeah. You had a wife. Because you didn't want to shock when you saw him. Yeah, that was it. Well, it was over door, after that first yeah. night. Let that well, go. I'd like to have been there when she opened that door and didn't see him. Oh, that would have been great right there. You got oh, to grab your, you clutch your pearls. Uh, is Brenda here? Uh, no? No, Brenda? But what if she yeah. went over with, the, with you know, the, the, the trench coat with nothing underneath it? What if she oh. went over with that? <laughs> and when the door opened, she oh. opened. Oh, my God. Ta-da! <laughs> Ooh, she was all the way wrong. Yeah, she was. All right. Yeah. Is all that right, Joyce that we used to go to school with? What is she doing? <laughs> Man, is Brenda that jo and Joyce? I know that looked like Joyce. That was Joyce. <laughs> it stood there with a trench coat on and nothing underneath it. What is wrong with her? She what was looking it? for the ice machine at the hotel. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one right there, Carl. Yeah. Uh, what flow is ice machine on? Is this an odd number flow? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's right, 92 degrees go. outside. Go ahead. <laughs> last one, guys. Last one. This is from Blake in Cincinnati. Blake writes, my husband loves to play cards and hang out at his friend's bar on the weekend. If I go to brunch on Saturday and or and on Sunday, he says I'm for the streets. Is it wrong for me to ha hang out with my girls if I have a babysitter and I'm not wasting any money? There's nothing wrong with that. There's something wrong with him. He tripping. You ought to, you ought to the yeah. same way he's able to go out and, and hang out with his boys, you ought to be able to hang out with your girl. So I, I hate it when men don't want to don't want to be balanced like that. Hey, let the, let the lady have her fun. Oh, you? you going out at night. She just going to brunch. <laughs> yeah. All right. She's got a babysitter. Right. <laughs> Maybe if you go with her to brunch, y'all can do something together and find out y'all really like each other. He don't want to do that, Junior. He don't want to do that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you, Riddle and Junior. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Our prayers are going out to those that are affected by the flash flooding in the New York area. A state of emergency was declared in that area after record-breaking rainfall caused flooding. Some boroughs got up to nine inches of rain, which made roads impassable, and it temporarily closed area airports. Pictures and video footage showed people wading through water, uh, reaching up to their knees as streets and subways were flooded. Most of the travel issues are resolved, but New Yorkers are still encouraged to stay 
stay safe and avoid troubles in areas. Uh, no deaths or critical injuries were reported. Wow. That's good. That's great. Very That's much so. Pictures yeah. and images and videos. Boy, that mm-hmm. rain was it came yeah. so fast. Yeah. It came so fast. I saw people walking through LaGuardia Airport talking about where my flight canceled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With luggage and stuff. Yeah. I saw, man, terrible. Crazy. When crazy. it rains hard and fast like that in a short period of time, man, it oh, loads crazy. up. It yeah. just it just flooded it all out, but then you just got to hold on tight. I'm um, proud of you for even talking about rain and stuff, Tom. Proud of you. Well, yeah, I can discuss it. We didn't say nothing about lightning. It's rain. <laughs> no, but <laughs> I'm just proud of you. You know you Okay, are. okay, okay. I can give y'all this real quick. So I ran the park last week, Memorial Park in Houston, Texas. I dropped my, my vehicle off to get to get detail and the and the park is just a few blocks away. Mm-hmm. It started lightning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was at that park. Junior, you couldn't have beat me last week. I ain't lying. You took off. I got, I got off. to that car wash. <laughs> so Give dark on fast. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Well, stay safe, New right. York. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, moving on to entertainment news, uh, switching gears here. An arrest has been made in the murder case of Tupac Shakur on Friday uh, in Las Vegas. Nevada police arrested Dwayne Keith D. Davis and a Nevada grand jury indicted him on one count of murder with a deadly weapon. The D.A. described Dwayne Keith D. Davis as the on-ground, on-site commander who ordered the death of Tupac. Uh, Keith D. has been on the radar of investigators for some time after he admitted in interviews and in his 2019 memoir, Compton Street Legend, that he was in the Cadillac where shots were fired during the fatal September 1990 drive-by that killed Tupac. Mm. Wow. wow. Mm. So an arrest has been made all these many years later. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that night. Mm-hmm. That great. Mm-hmm. How many years has this been now? 27. 96, 97. Because I remember that night and Suge got shot that mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In Vegas. Yeah. It was yeah. in okay. Vegas. You're right. Yep. And then Pac died. On yeah, the like street. A- uh huh. Like a week mm-hmm. later or six days later. Yeah, that was so sad. Yeah, yeah was it really sad. was. Sad about that. <clears throat> all right. So uh, moving on to Taylor Swift and uh, Travis Kelsey, they've been trending all weekend, and it looks like the Swifties, of course, that's Taylor's fan base, uh, have really come for Kelsey's ex girlfriend Maya Benberry, uh, who claims she's been getting death threats from the Swifties ever since she said negative things about her past relationship with Kelsey. Benberry told Inside Edition that Swifties are aggressive, very negative, and very hypocritical. She added that it, it's really crazy that someone that I think is positive and really nice has such a negative and angry fan base. Wow. She's you saying the Swifties call, are negative and angry. You need yeah. to call the Beehive to get your back. That's what you need. <laughs> That's yeah. Beyonce's yeah, fan That's base. Beyonce. Wow. You need that kind of group to help you out to get you out this jam right here. Mm. <laughs> Beehives against the Swifties. Yeah, but that, she was just talking about her experience. I mean, some people say she shouldn't have said anything, and that may be true, but that was that was her experience. Yeah, with, been, with Travis right Kelsey. Be. So, you well, know. Travis says she wants her 15 minutes of fame, yeah. mm-hmm. and so the Swifties want her to go away. So, stop talking about yeah. tra- <laughs> Taylor's current <laughs> boyfriend. So. The death threats, though? No, absolutely <laughs> not. That's, that yeah. That's not good. Yeah. yeah. Oh All right. She said they're really aggressive, very negative, and that she called them hypocrites as well. So maybe she could holler Flav be... Flav because he's a Swifty. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Flav, call him off. Call him off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Finally, uh, longtime California Senator Dianne Feinstein passed away at the age of 90. Uh, she was a trailblazing Democrat. She was elected to the Senate back in 1992 and served six terms. Feinstein was the oldest member of the Senate and the longest serving female senator in history. And uh, may she rest in peace. And of course, our condolences going out to her family and friends. Yeah. 90 years yeah. old. Nice. Six yeah. terms. Yeah, I ain't mad right. at 90, man. Right. Ooh, she's yeah. a legend. <laughs> yes, she is. California legend. legend. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Not wow. mad at 90 years old at mm-hmm. all. Yeah. And this might be a good time to remind our, our listeners of Steve Harvey Nation to get registered to vote. You know, these important elections are coming up. 
So make sure you're registered. Make sure you're ready when the elections come around. You know, no excuses, nothing. We need to get out there and show up for real. Yeah, I mean, like you we just have saw been the, doing. Yeah, but you just saw the president had to sign an emergency bill to avoid the government shutdown. Shutdown, shutdown. yeah. So this is important right. for you to get out and vote and mm-hmm. register to vote so you can make sure you have leaders that are representing you, the constituents that vote for them, to make Absolutely. sure that they understand what's important to you and government mm-hmm. shutdown and trying to, you know, impeach the president instead of trying to keep the government open. <laughs> What's right? It's What's so happening? much going on. Right. It's just so much what we, going what on politically. On? Y'all yeah. need something to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For Ain't sure. No you see the girl yeah. in Dallas that was that was that uh, got them that, that all the way together. <laughs> yes. uh, now what happened? Yes. What's her position, Carla? What's the young lady's name out of Dallas? Oh, it's, it's 10 seconds. We'll talk yeah. about okay. it. We'll yeah. talk about it. <laughs> All right, coming up at 20 minutes after, a Michigan teacher is hitting the head with a metal chair in her classroom. We'll talk about that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Did you guys hear about this tragic story in Michigan? Um, An unidentified teacher um, at Flint Southwestern Academy in Michigan was knocked out. I mean, knocked out when a student threw a metal chair at her and the chair struck her in the head. According to witnesses what? and a, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, uh, according to a witness and a viral video um, that has over 8 million views so far, the teacher stepped in between the teenagers and was trying to just diffuse an argument that the, the students were having. It, it had gotten way out of control, so the teacher stepped in. When she stepped in, that's when she was struck with um, this metal chair in the head. She dropped to the ground, was immobile for several seconds. The students seemed not to even care that she was injured. They just kept the commotion going. No one stopped to check on the teacher or anything like that. Uh, she, she She was just lying there. The teacher was rushed to the hospital. She was released the same day in stable condition, thank God. Now, according to the school superintendent, the student that threw the chair will be held accountable according to the law. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But can you and imagine expelled. though? Man. And expelled. You need to yeah. be expelled. You you need to be no well, you can't even come back to the school no more. But when you get to the point where you're gonna pick up a chair and hit a teacher in the head with yeah. you lost your That's damn mind. That's trying to stop a fight in no the home in training. her room. Nothing. No home. Because we already Nothing. know the moment this teacher pick up a chair and hit this student, then we got a then you oh, got it's over. It's over. It's over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. They need they need to have assault felony charges. Yeah. They need to be expelled from the school mm-hmm. and they need to go to alternative school or yeah. something else. Because yeah. you can't you have to set an example. You can't just be throwing chairs I, I at yeah. teachers uh, in the class. And then when you did it, you didn't even react to, you, to yeah. her no, they, they, injury. No, no, no. Y'all just the looking other, at her. Yeah. What? They the other to, fight is to still stop going on. The teacher, not each other. Yeah. They wanted to stop the teacher from stopping them from fighting. Right. And everybody filming that needs to be suspended mm-hmm. too. Everybody, mm-hmm. all y'all pulling out phones. Oh, it's on that. tape. Yeah, yeah that's, how uh, yeah. That's, that's how we see it. That's our song. Yeah, that's how we see it. Yeah, they've already got glad, they've Mr. already Mr. got Mr. eight million views on this video. You better be glad Mr. Tommy ain't your teacher. That's what you be better be glad. But I swear, every time I see you come in that classroom, I'm hitting your ass with something. Every we, time I see you. And we, we throwing chairs. We yeah. throwing chairs. Because and and we here, we love our teachers. We understand the hard work that you put in and, and the fact that you're underpaid. We get it. We get it. And we're for teachers, for sure, yep. on this show. And we, we can't love do our what teachers. they do, man. We no. cannot do what they do. Yeah. All right. Coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, we'll discuss guilt tipping. No, not guilt tripping. Guilt tipping. That's the thing. I do this all the time. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it when we come back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. So the new way of tipping is being called guilt tipping. Okay, because it's almost as if you're forced to tip. Uh, We've all... We've all used one of those digital devices that make paying for everything easier, right? You know, put your card in, you tap your card, do all that, right? Well, those convenient devices are the major cause of excessive tipping. A study by Forbes Advisor found that 75% of Americans are leaving big tips when prompted to on tablets 
and uh, smart card readers. Unlike the old-fashioned way of paying for a tip in cash, people said they feel pressure to tip now. It, it mostly happens when a cashier or waitress is standing in front of you. Uh, people surveyed said it's psychologically more difficult to stiff them on a tip, even if all they did was ring up your item and put it in a bag. <laughs> That's all they did, but you're tipping them 20%. We shouldn't 20%. be tipping at McDonald's now. I'm just sorry. We shouldn't be tipping at McDonald's. Well, here's the question. Have you guys been guilted into leaving a tip that you otherwise would not have left? So you left one at McDonald's, Tommy? Is that what you're saying? I ain't been to McDonald's, but but I'm just saying it's, a, it's, it's at every fast food now. When you tap, it's, mm-hmm. there's a tip right there. So that, the, uh, the, uh, they have oh, you, God. You oh, God. Tip, you could tip at Starbucks, too. You could tip uh-huh, at Starbucks. Uh-huh. They'll mm-hmm. put the machine out the window if you go through the drive through and you put your card I, in. I don't know. And, it, and it'll ask you if you want a tip and how much. I and said, then, no. No, yeah. I no. want to pay for the coffee. That's what <laughs> I want to pay for. I'm not tipping for the coffee. I want to pay for the damn coffee. Really? No, okay. I, was I don't know how y'all food. feel guilty. How y'all feel guilty? I don't care if you're standing there. You can look me dead in my eye. I'm going to tell you no again. <laughs> I'm not Junior, guilty. I don't feel guilty about this. The Lord only requires 10%. That's that's true. How do, how do we get up to 20% I, tipping? Hey, I don't know. <laughs> now, I go to I a fine restaurant, I'm tipping. I'm tipping. Well, yeah, I'm all about sure. tipping. Yeah. You know, for sure. It's certain, but it's just certain things. I'll be like, we got, we tipping for that though? Yeah. You know, it's yesterday, certain things that. You know, so yesterday you, I went you, to Whole Foods and I went to get a smoothie, just a smoothie. So I tapped my card. They had one of the machines they're talking about. I tapped, put my card on there to tap. It said, how much do you want to tip? 15, 18, 20, right 25. <laughs> yeah. he, he, I tipped him because he made my smoothie. He well, made my smoothie, so thing. I tipped that's him. That's the thing. You have to. Yeah. Three smoothies cost $40. Tip, mm-hmm. I don't tip in a just a fine restaurant because I used to be a hostess and a waitress. So I t- I'm an over tipper. I uh-huh, do that me too. because mm-hmm. I've been there and I understand. And not just people that work in fine restaurants need a tip. Now, a lot of times you could go to a restaurant and order something and go in and get it to go. Pick now, it up. Do you, yeah. do you tip now for that? No, not I do not tip fast for that. Food. Uh-huh. No, it's fast food. No, I'm, I don't care if I call in an order. When I come pick it up, I'm picking it up and I'm going back outside. <laughs> I'm not tipping for that. Junior, you are okay. about this. You yeah, because okay, I've been, I've been accused of that talking about, damn, you ain't going to leave no tip. No, you just you ain't did nothing. Okay, here's Why one, am here's I tipping at the buffet? I fixed my own plate, went all the way up there to the ring, and then all of a sudden you talking about, uh, what you gonna put up to 15 or 20? Nothing. Custom. Custom. I've checked custom. Custom. Zero. 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 Yes. Yeah, they That's have it. custom on there too. So, You're right. Yeah. So let me I ask y'all about the man that made my smoothie. I did. I tipped him, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Hairstylist. Everybody tips their hairstylist, right? I so, I mean, if your, if your hair do yeah, is 100 always. bucks, you know, whatever your, your cost, you still put a tip on that, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. That's normal? Yeah. yeah. I've been yes. doing that for years. Yeah. So, yeah. If, let me, so, if the, let's just say it's $85. Why not just make the hair cut $100? And then it, it's all in there. Let's just let's just call it what it is. It's like like it's like we said in the story, it's psychological. It, See, it's right there. It, <laughs> and is the hair stylist that charging me a hundred dollars? Are they expecting the tip to be on that too? Well, I it, think it would be. Know, like this, it would be nice. Point, you know, yeah. they're used to getting tips. So yeah, if you don't get one, they would think that was odd if they didn't get a tip. I'm sure. I, I, don't I tip mind my nails. Tip, tipping people for a service. I don't mind mm-hmm. hairstyles, mm-hmm. nails. Mm-hmm. I, I don't mind yeah. with that. No. If my no. But can I cut. tip you after I get the service? Like like like. Yeah, you like can. Kate. Yeah, like you know, if I get my dressing room <laughs> catered. You know, my assistant will say, we need to put the tip in there. We ain't got the food yet. We ain't even ate nothing yet. <laughs> we ain't ate nothing yet. Next we ain't even good. With the prank phone call for today, right after this. <laughs> tip my pranks. Y'all don't tip my pranks. We ain't gonna tip my pranks. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, I wish I enjoyed it as much as he does. Uh, we'll find out what that's all about <laughs> coming up in just a few. Because right now it is time for the nephew and today's prank phone call. Nephew, what do you have for us today? What's on the menu, Shirley, sir? let's mm-hmm. see here. We, As we spoke from the last uh, break. About tipping, I'm gonna need a tip after y'all hear this prank. I mean, it's just it's just procedure, isn't it? Right? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. You're providing a service. It's, I'm providing a service. It's, it's a you prank service. You bring food with the prank. You just brought us the prank. Exactly. Y'all should tip for that. You know okay? I mean, you're right, man. We I need some fries that. or something. Come on. At the end of my shows now, I'm asking for tips. After I get through telling these jokes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want tips right after I finish. Because everybody else getting tips here. I'm going to tip your Tommy for the prank. I got you. Yeah, yeah. So that's right. So after our shows, let's get us a little love basket, little, yeah, little, yeah. little, little love Pass offering. Pass this basket. around, love offering. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got Comedy one love offering basket. You huh? Got one the machines. So um, yeah. Put our car. <laughs> put, our car <laughs> put your card in. I'm gonna lick you dead in your eye. Make you feel guilty. <laughs> Guilt tipping. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. We got Faye Allen's drug test. Faye Allen's drug test. Everybody ready? Put your seatbelt on, because Faye Allen is straight crazy. Let's go, cat dog. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach a Faye Allen, please. This is she. Hello, uh, this is Officer Rogers from the uh, probation department. Yes, sir. Listen now, um, you have been uh, on probation for a little over a year now. Am I right, Faye? Yes, sir. You're correct. Now, you're supposed to be serving two years probation? Two. All right. Now, I'm giving you a call. Actually, uh, I'm bringing you a bit of bad news, and I, I hate to do this, but you you came in, Faye, a couple a um, couple weeks ago and did a did a uh, drug test. Am I right? Uh huh. I sure did. I did. All right. Now, Faye, I don't. I hate to bring bring you some bad news, but the actual drug test that you took has come back positive. Oh, you f- lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, you came in a couple weeks ago. You took a drug test. This drug test has actually come in positive. Now, what I want to say to you is this. You're going to have to actually. No, sir. My test wasn't positive. You got the wrong person. Hold on a second. I either need you to to come in to me or I don't. And I don't want to save the embarrassment of having to send the car out to pick you up. I don't give a damn how much embarrassment you're talking about, sir. I gave you some and my was good. Ma'am. Right now, you I got you a. Po- uh, you have a positive drug test. You have you 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 come up positive, ma'am. Now you gotta have to use actually- your. Did they use your? Did they use mine? We used the one that you brought us. Now must have, here- must have been the wrong one. Couldn't have been. Ma'am, have been, sir. I'm sorry, sir, but I wouldn't have gave you no bad urine. This just wasn't me. Ma'am, now, I'm trying I don't want to have go a- back to jail. I don't even know why you would call me with this nonsense. I got ma'am. children. I'm trying to do right. I don't know why you would call me. I wouldn't have gave you no bad. That's not me. You said a lie. Ma'am, you listen. Said a lie. Uh, you you said a have lie. to come in and do another three months now. Oh, sir, y'all can come pick me up. I can tell you right now. I can in your hand if you want me to. Ma'am, your your urine has come back positive of drugs. Now I don't I don't know any other way to explain it to you. You've been actually evidently using drugs again. I'm trying to tell you, I don't use no drugs. I've been clean for a year and some months now. You got the wrong. That's not my. Now, How do you I'm telling you that? How do you know it's not yours, ma'am? It's, it's got your name on the lid, everything. You have come back positive. Well, evidently you put your name on it, cause that ain't my. And I would have came back. My would have came back good. You can't call me and tell me I gave you some bad. Can't ma'am. call me and tell me that. That's a negative, sir. That's a double negative. It's not a double negative. It's a double positive. You've actually come back positive. Faye is written here on the actual cup. Maybe you have more than one Faye. No. No, we don't have more than one Faye. You're the only Faye. I've actually double-checked that myself. You need to either come in or we're going to have to come out and haul your behind in here. Well, I need you to come right now because I got the right now. Come right now. Come on. Are you trying to tell me that if I come and pick you up and take your urine now, your urine is going to come up negative? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm telling you that. My, you're double positive with that. My urine is going to come up negative. <sighs> Ma'am, I, I hate to, I, I, I don't want to come out, haul you in in front of your family, but you're actually going to be coming in and you're going to do three months. That's all I can tell you. I don't you're gonna- have confidence, sir. You got the wrong say, I don't know. You got the wrong It's one of the two. Might be both. You got the wrong you got the wrong say. I'm letting you. No positive I ain't had no positive I'm trying to tell you, I got kids. I bet I, I ain't had no positive Listen, ma'am, I'm telling you one more time. You either want to come in or want me to come and get you. Which one? Let me tell you what I want you to do. I want you to find out who the you have. Because that ain't my 
Don't call me no mama and tell me nothing about you got some some that is, that is not good. I gave you some good. How many times I got to for y'all? Y'all keep picking up people, falsely accusing folks. Y'all had me saying some time, miss my children. Now I'm out. I've been giving you good and you still wanna with me. I'm tired. I ain't giving you no bad. Don't call me no more with no like that. And where is my probation officer? You say your name is what? My name is Officer Rogers. Sir, I don't know Officer Rogers. Like I said, you might be the reason why the came back positive. You might be the reason. I need to speak with Mr. Williams. That's my probation officer. Officer Williams, no. I have clean at all times. Mr. Rogers, you shouldn't be calling me. I should be calling you because I'm going to, evidently, I'm going to have to come down and haul your behind in myself. Well, you can bring your ass home. And when you come, you bring Mr. Williams with you. He'll let you know I don't have no positive. You can come to my job. I got... I, you got, you know what, there's one more, there's one more thing that I need to, bring your on. come on right now, come on, I got one more thing I need to say to you, are you listening to me, what is it sir, this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey morning show, you just got pranked by your sister, <laughs> Allen. I know one thing, y'all play too much, y'all play too much, you tell that <laughs> whipping, I was coming to get him, Mr. Rogers, she gonna get that <laughs> whipping. <laughs> Say well, you no, all right? No, no positive. Scared <laughs> the hell out of me. Had me thinking I was doing drugs and didn't know about it. Somebody picked up my nose. I'm gonna need y'all not to play with people like that. Okay. Say you all right? Hell no, I'm nervous as hell. It was, it's your sister. <laughs> she put me up to it, baby. Well, when you ever see her, you see what she looked like. I'm gonna beat the hell out of her. <laughs> I got one more question for you, baby. You got to tell me this. What is the baddest? I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land. The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> uh, I don't think Faye was playing up in here. I don't think Faye was playing up in here. No game. Okay. Zero. <laughs> mm. <laughs> or get yourself into something. That's what you're going to do. All right. It's it jumping on Colleen, Texas. Colleen, Texas, this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Twice as funny comedy club. The nephew is coming to town. Tickets are on sale right now. That is this weekend. Colleen, Texas. Get ready, get ready. And then a week later, we got Stockbridge. That is Stockbridge, uh, uh, Georgia. Everybody know what that is? Stockbridge, Georgia. Junior, yeah. y'all live in, uh, yeah, in the ATL. Yeah, uh, yeah, 75 South. Yeah. All right, then. That's the Bridge Comedy <laughs> Show. It is Monique, hosted by yours truly. We got Dominique in the building. Our boy, Rodney Perry, is in the building. And Tony Roberts. It is the Bridge Comedy Show. Tickets are on sale right now. It's the Stockbridge Ample Theater, baby. You don't want to miss it. Hosted by yours truly. And then laying in the cut, Chicago, Illinois, at the Airy Crown. Did you hear me? That's oh, me, yeah. Bill Bellamy. That's Gary Owen. That's oh. Melanie Camacho. My girl. All right. <laughs> Kevin Tate, Benji Brown, Tony Roberts again. We all in the building, baby. Tickets are on sale right now at the Airy Crown and then laying in the cut. The Magic City Classic, Birmingham, Alabama. The nephew at the Star Dome. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So when you get your tickets for the game and all the little all the all the all the tailgating, make sure you bring your tail over to uh the Star all right. <laughs> Move your tail out the way. It's time for the strawberry letter coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, on work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com by clicking Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like, gonna read, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now, and you never know, it could be yours. You never know. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. All right. Thank you, nephew. Subject, I wish I enjoyed it as much as he does. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm dating a man that has all the things a man is supposed to have. He's handsome, he's in shape, and he loves the Lord. The fact that he can't keep a job is another story, but I'm being patient until he finds a job that he loves. He's 37 and I'm 39. He has two children and I have one child. I'm willing to make all of the necessary 
adjustments to be with this man, but he's got to do some things for me, too. Our sex life is lacking in a major way. It's the size and the technique. I've learned over the years that if the technique is great, then the size doesn't really matter. I've made more than a few recommendations to him, and he won't take any of my advice. He thinks he is the man in the bedroom, and I'm not into faking anything, so he's built up this confidence all on his own, and it's funny to me. We've been together for three years, and instead of getting better, it's getting worse. He works up a sweat, talks all the way through it, and he's even stopped to wipe his head with a towel a few times. Meanwhile, I'm thinking of my ex-boyfriend the whole time. When we're done, he's got a burst of energy and he cooks breakfast or a full meal, depending on what time of day it is. <laughs> he buys me gifts and tells me I'm the best woman he's ever been with, and I wish I could tell him the same thing. He's great, but the intimacy is trash. How important is great sex in a mar- in a relationship? Is it a small sacrifice to make if the man is good at everything else? Uh, you know, if you got to ask these questions, there's already a problem. And, and to answer your question, yes, sex and intimacy, extremely important in a relationship, okay? That's where you bond. That's where you show your love for your partner. You shut out the world and, and just enjoy each other. And, and, and why are you even asking about sacrifice when you're the only one sacrificing anything in this relationship? This man doesn't have a job. He can't keep one, of course. According to you, and he's bad in the bedroom. Uh, how have you put up with this for three whole years? You also said you've talked to him about his performance and he doesn't listen. Well, you're going to have to make him listen and, and hear you somehow uh, because the reason you're writing this strawberry letter is because you're becoming bored and frustrated with him. If you're being patient until he finds a job he loves, uh, how long is that going to take? At this point, he just needs to get a job and, and you're going to have to, to, to leave this one-sided relationship if he doesn't. I mean, there's so many things in this letter that we could talk about, and I'm sure uh, Tommy and Junior will get to them as well. But, um, you know, you think that he has all the things that a man is supposed to have? No, he doesn't. You're, you're disillusioned with all of this. Tommy? You're just so selfish. You really are. He's handsome. He in shape. He love the Lord. The boy cook a whole meal. He good with that. He giving he giving you gifts. Where well, then he's lacking in the size and the technique. How much do you want? I mean, you 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 getting something? I mean, what else do you want? Though? You got you got to have the size. You got to have the technique. I mean, you just you already can tell he can't take it. The boy over there sweating and in the middle of it. He got to stop and wipe his head. He he dripping wet just with sweat. He can't he can't do all this stuff. So I don't know what it is you're trying to, you're trying to give him now a sex evaluation. It's too late for that. Y'all been doing this three years. So no, it's not going to get any better than this. It is what it is. So that leads me to this. And I hate to say it. Thank you're you. going to have to get a side piece. I just, I just, you're going to have to get a side. It's just, I, I just, I just don't see any other way around this for you. I just don't. And we don't want to lose the great qualities that he does have. He loves the law. He's in shape. He ain't in too much shape because he's sweating too much up in there. So he ain't, that's a lie. He really ain't in that kind of shape. And all this, he handsome and he cook good. He cook good. And he bring these gifts. And we don't want to lose that. We want that. We want that to continue. We like that part. But he's missing on the sex side. And you don't want to give him up because he's missing that. Therefore, you need a side piece. You, you just do. You <laughs> do. You need somebody to come in twice a week and just, you know, do what they do. I understand. You are miss. We talked earlier. I can't remember what part of the break it was. Somebody was making too much noise having sex in their condo. That's what you want. You want that. And y'all ain't making noise. He, he just sweating and it's just a pool of sweat all over the floor. And you're going to have to find you somebody. But see, can't nobody come by because he got a job, because he ain't got no damn job. He had right. Right. We got to get him a job so we can get him to working so we can have room for side piece time. And you don't have room right now. And we got to figure out how to get you some room. What we need to work on is who hiring. 
Now, maybe they hiring down there at the church because he love the Lord. Now, you know, the Lord will give you a job if you ask for one. Yeah, go down there to the church and see a pastor got something he can do. Mm -hmm. Cut the yard down there or something. Whatever it is, you need to pay attention to what his schedule is so we can schedule this side piece. We got to have some room. We got to find a good hour for this side piece to come in and handle up for you so you'll be able to work. I Personally, if I was you, I'd do more like a... Like a Monday and a Thursday. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to tell your side piece about no technique. And you ain't got to worry about no side. Because side piece coming with all of that. Now, he, ain't, he might not be handsome. Okay? He probably ain't finna cook nothing afterwards. Side piece don't, side pieces don't do all that. He, 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 uh, he probably don't love the Lord. But that ain't what you're looking for. You looking for technique and size. And that's how you get to it. And I hate to tell you that. That is not the ready to love, Tommy. That's just Tommy. Okay? All Thank right, you. nephew. <laughs> Thank you. We'll have part two of this strawberry letter <laughs> coming up <laughs> at 23 minutes after the hour. Uh, today's strawberry letter subject, I wish I enjoyed it as much as he does. We'll hear from Junior right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now for the part two of the strawberry letter. We got to recap it. Uh, the subject <laughs> is, I wish I enjoyed it as much as you do, uh, as much as he does. I wish I enjoyed it as much as he does. Uh, a 39-year-old woman uh, wrote in. She's dating for three years. She's been dating this guy who's 37. Uh, she says he has all the things a man should have. Uh, he's handsome. He's in shape. He loves the Lord, but he can't keep a job and he's waiting to try and find a job that he loves she says even with all that uh he's terrible in the bedroom he's bad in the bedroom um and she uh is trying to he's make terrible. She's willing. yeah she he's terrible she's willing to make all the necessary adjustments with this man but he has to do some things for her too uh he's lacking in size he's lacking in techniques and she says if the technique is great, size doesn't really matter, but he doesn't have either of those. Uh, she said he's, you know, thinking that he's bringing it in the bedroom. He's not. He's sweating. You're he's, not! <laughs> he's, he's doing all these things. He's wipe, wipes his head with, with a, a towel a few times, you know, during the sessions and all that, you know, but she, she's, she's unimpressed. <laughs> and she's thinking of her ex-boyfriend all during this time while she's in there with him. Mm -hmm. So she wants to know how important is great sex in a relationship and uh, is it a small sacrifice to make if the man is good at everything else? So that's where we are. That's where we are. Junior, what you got? Uh-uh. No, 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 no. It's trash. The uh -huh. thing you said was <laughs> trash. intimacy was trash. Yeah, she said it. Yeah, ain't no, ain't no good trash. It's trash. <laughs> I, I don't care what you say. I, this is what gets me about it. Because he, he love the Lord. He handsome and he in shape. Mm -hmm. But what that got to do with technique and size? Uh -huh. you, you, uh -huh. Let me tell you something. You got to have both. <laughs> you, you got to. Ain't no one or the other. No, we can Double. make it with just one or the other. No, that mm -hmm. man, please. This is this, try it. Mm -hmm. Then he got the nerve to be talking all the way through it. Now, what yeah. is he saying? See, you over here taking this trash and you just laid up there looking at him while he talking and working up a sweat. So mm -hmm. I don't even know how you doing this, but I think in my mind it's probably something like this. Because in fantasy land, you think about your ex. Yeah, but he in here yeah. talking to you while you filing your nails. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. So you just gonna file on me? You gonna file on me? Huh? You just gonna file your nails like I ain't doing nothing? Oh, watch this. Watch that. Okay. So now you just gonna iron your clothes? Huh? You gonna iron your clothes while I'm in here putting in all this work? Huh? You gonna see this here? Oh, oh, you trying to try me? Oh, you trying to try me? So you gonna watch First Forty Eight while I'm doing all this work right here? You gonna watch a crime show on me? Ah, I'm gonna turn, make, turn that off right now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is you getting cleaning supplies? You gonna clean the restroom on me? That what you finna do? Cause she can do all these things cause it's trash. That's what she said. That's what she doing. Cause it's trash. She can't do nothing else. Hey, I don't even know why. I don't even know why we even talking about this. So you know I love the Lord. So you gonna pull the Bible out on me? Okay. You gonna read the scripture right now? Yeah, oh yeah. The some, yeah. The Man, it's not working for you. No. And you've been with this for three years? Three years. How did he mm. get to have no technique, no size, and no job? Ah! Because he's <laughs> handsome in shape and loves the Lord. That's why. Ah! He, this is Tommy. He's not in Come shape. On, man. Junior, he's not in shape. I'm sorry. He can't Go be. Ahead. No, I'm telling you. And why, then all of a sudden, we become. So, so all of a sudden, that you finish doing all this non work, now we become a recalendar. You in here cooking now. You're a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> <Not surprised. laughs>
Now you in here just baking everything. Got a full meal, full spread. <laughs> what, what is this? And it's probably now that he can't get a job. He's just waiting for the job that he loves, she said. He's get, he wants the job that he loves. So she's well, he, should get a catering, he should get a catering service. Yeah, then. since he can cook, yeah. right? Uh-huh. <laughs> a handsome chef. Yeah. This, is, this doesn't work for me. I don't, I don't get it. You need to leave him. Because you did this for three yes. years. Yes. It's three years, it is. And you might as well call your ex-boyfriend up. So you're going to talk to him while I'm in here putting it, okay, you're going to hang that phone up. Oh, you're going to put that phone up. Right? Watch this. Uh-huh. Give me my towel. Give me my towel. Give me my towel. Oh my hey, Jason. Yeah. yeah. What you Where doing? Is Jason when you need him. Oh, you gonna, so you're going to call Jason's name out like I ain't in here? I know what you're going to do. Okay, all right. You're going you gonna to say Melvin in a minute. In a minute, you're going to say Melvin. Melvin. <laughs> yeah. Give, give me my towel. Give me my towel. Give me time. <laughs> Why? Stop. Don't yeah. matter. So you just fold and clothes while I'm in here working, huh? I got your leg up. You can still fold a T-shirt while your leg in the air? Okay. All right. I see what you're doing now. Are right, you going to make me mad? Now I'm going to tell you to put that whole basket down. Watch this. All right. Ain't nothing happening because it's trash. Yes. She said it was trash. It's well, he trash. buys her gifts. She, he buys her gifts now. He does do that. He tells he's her making he's making up best. for it, Shirley. Yeah, he yeah. tells her she's the best woman he's ever been with. Now, let's understand this, Shirley. They're not good gifts now. Oh, 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 oh. 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 <laughs> Where he get the money for a good gift? Oh, he, he got no job. job. That's right. That's true. That's true. He, huh? That's right. And he's he waiting for the gift. job that he loves before he gets a job. Them oh, no, dollar store gonna, gifts. Yeah, he got, yeah, I'm about to say, Tommy. You know, you got you got the fan you plug in the bottom of your phone, keep you cool. That's what you got. <laughs> and that's a wonderful gift. Yeah, that that's them the ones she get. What was some here surprise us? Like you get some great gifts in here. Uh-uh. Oh, you should have been this three-piece candle holder. There you go, Carla. That's it. <laughs> Carla's got the fun, phone fan, ah! yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they get? <laughs> he buying, no he buying, he buying fruit. You know, I went by the grocery store, got you some yeah, grapes, baby. A fruit I got basket. You some grapes, you hear me? Yeah. Come on now. Uh, what is he cooking though? What is he cooking in the kitchen? Grilled oh, cheese, bologna yeah. sandwiches. Going, they ain't got no go, money. They ain't got no money. Nah. Roman yeah. noodles. <laughs> All right, listen, leave your comments on thank you guys on today's Strawberry Letter on Instagram and Steve Harvey FM. And check us out on the Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app where free never sounded so good. Now, coming up next, we have uh, Junior with Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. Junior, what you got? Okay, well, we got a few things that's happening. Uh, we'll cover the games tomorrow when Steve get back. But listen, let me tell you this, man. Dame Lillard got traded, man. He gone to Milwaukee. Dame Lillard left. Yeah. Home, he, yes, he gone to the Milwaukee Bucks. Him he went to Greek. He oh, went to Greek freak, man. Uh-oh. Oh, no. And, you know, and it, it looked at them like they're going to probably win out the East now, man, because Dame Lillard deserves a shot at a championship, man. He does. He, he was he in does. Portland 11 years, man. He gave them 11 years. That's long enough, man. I just want to compete for a championship. And, you know, it's Dame time in Milwaukee now. And it's so crazy mm-hmm. because you, we thought he was going to the Heat. The Heat really wanted him to go play with Jimmy Butler. You know, play with Jimmy Butler. But he ended up in, in Milwaukee, man. And that's so crazy because Milwaukee, you rather really hear about them getting the big trades like that because it's a smaller city. You know, if you, if you like a person like Dame Little, you want a national stage like New York or Miami or LA, you know, something like that. But he ended up in Milwaukee, which lets you know that Milwaukee's changing. They, 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 they can just track the big players now. Cause you gonna play with the Greek freak, dog. You you know you gonna be in the playoffs for one. You gonna he ain't gonna there. stay in Milwaukee. Though. He gonna live in Chicago. He gonna ride down there to Milwaukee. <laughs> That's a ways though. That? That's a couple it's of saying, hours. He ain't just gonna stay in Milwaukee. <laughs> he gonna move to Chicago. <laughs> He'll get a driver. He'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, be good. It's cold in Milwaukee. Oh yes, it is colder yes, it than is. Chicago. Colder than Chicago, yes, colder than yes. Chicago for sure. Yes, mm-hmm. And also, man, let's give it up to Colorado, man. They played a great yes. game. They came up, they they came up <laughs> lost 48 to 41. But boy, but they put up some hell of an effort, though, man. Yeah, yeah. man. They all had nothing to be shamed. Though. Hold y'all head high, man. Prime, y'all doing that, man. Because, you know, they were supposed half. to lose. Yeah, that second half was great, Carla. They were supposed to lose by 21. That was a spread, 21. Junior, I'm at the HBCU. I'm at the Texas Southern University game. Not at the uh-huh. game, but at the tailgating. And watch. they not watching TSU play. They watching... <laughs> Colorado <laughs> under the tent. That's what. <laughs> Dang, everybody TV on Colorado. Everybody tuned in. <laughs> Prime time is everybody's favorite yeah. coach. We love is, him. Man. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we do. Mm-hmm. I was hosting a brunch 
on Saturday, and they said, put Prime on women, Coach Prime. <laughs> I said, y'all watch yeah. the Not yeah. put the game on. Put Prime, Prime on. on. <laughs> Prime on, baby. Yeah. Female bartenders. Him. We got you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what the world? Yeah. Put Prime on. The Coach mm-hmm. Prime effect. Let's Best go. Best coach yeah. ever. Best so coach man, ever. Prime, yeah. You, man, them boys, yes. man, played their heart out. I ain't even mad, man. And also, congratulations to Canelo Alvarez for beating Jamel Charlo, man. The fight, man, it was just, it was just Alvarez, the whole fight, man. Really? No, oh, yeah, wow. man. You know, Jamel Charlo, it was it was a unification bout. And, uh, you know, he went up two weight classes. So he went up two weight classes to try to beat Canelo Alvarez, man. Hard thing. How much, how much weight did he put on? Uh, about 20 something pounds. It was 167. You know, God, if he fit Yeah, he might only be fighting at like 140 something. But 167, dog, that's, that's kind of heavy. Speed wasn't there. So yeah. that's sports for the day, Shirley. All right. Thank you, Junior. Coming up at the top of the hour, a female listener needs some advice after she's caught with an escort. Uh oh. <laughs> we'll get into that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys. So this is from an anonymous female in Maryland. She says, I'm a 42-year-old executive and our annual division meeting was in Cancun. I'm divorced, so I invited an escort to join me so I could have a great time on the trip. He's slightly younger than I am and I pay him for sex. While I was at the conference, he was running his mouth and the bar with one of my co-workers. He bragged that he scored a free trip and all he had to do was, quote, have sex with the lady. Uh, he didn't know I work with the guy. My co-worker told a few of our other co-workers and they tried to judge me and make me yeah. feel ashamed. What's so wrong with me wanting to have fun? Wow. Yeah, I don't think anything is wrong with you wanting to have fun. I think you and this guy should have had an understanding that, hey, we are finna go around my co-workers and yeah. my, my job. So, you know, let's keep this under wraps. Just enjoy yourself. Have a good time. Drinks and everything on me. But shut your damn mouth. And he did. But if you have to tell a person that. <laughs> uh, what guy does that? What guy goes to the yeah. bar and says, yeah, I, this is what I do. Who does that? Yeah, That's pretty slightly, stupid. Mm-hmm. Well, slightly l- younger than she is. So maybe yeah. that has something to do with it. His age. What you think, Junior? i tell you what I think. I think, uh, you know, he's really wrong for just running his mouth at it. But for the gentleman in the letter, for the lady mm-hmm. in the letter, see the gentleman in there. See, he bringing it. He on a trip. See, his technique and size is working. <laughs> it got him to Cancun. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. This is what you need, lady. This is what you want. You want technique and she and he get paid, too. See? Mm-hmm. See? It wasn't the other way around. It's the other way around. She paying him. See? Yo, that's what you want. Size and technique. It, it, it turns into money. It does. <laughs> and a trip to Cancun? I don't care who he told. I told everybody, too. But I took fine. You I what? told everybody at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in Cancun. Boy, I ain't never been down here. Look at water blue. <laughs> Look at You know how I got down here? Let me tell you how I got down here. <laughs> Size and technique got me down here. That's how I'm down here. Oh, all right, bartender, give me another one. Yeah, is this our brother and all these drinks? Yeah, you know Lisa? Boy, I'm knocking the socks off Lisa, boy. Oh, my God. Boy, I'm knocking the socks Sock. off Lisa, boy. So I got down here. Is that a pool? Is that a jacuzzi in my room? Look at this, Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> oh, this what they do for you. <laughs> all right, oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, that's... Mm. Yeah, it's nothing even wrong know. with her wanting to have fun, but yeah. I don't even know who you call for escort. I don't even I know nothing about that. Why, why do you bring an escort on a business trip? Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. You, you could yeah. wait till you got back home. Mm-hmm. It, it was mm-hmm. She wanted to have fun. She, she wanted, wanted to have, have a different fun. kind of experience in Cancun. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, go to Cancun on your personal time. Not, <laughs> you don't want people talking. I'm just yeah. saying. I had to. I had to tell them. You had to, you had to you run him out. quiet on that one. Yeah, no. He's no, trying to I build up his one. clientele. Yeah. Oh. You know, Any of you like other ladies? That part, that part, Tommy. All these yeah. other ladies, you see oh, this. No, you, see yeah, this. you see this. You see this. I'm with your boss. Right. Yeah, I take my car. <laughs> Size yeah. and technique is what we specialize in. <laughs> All right, we have time for one more. Uh, this one's from Haley. In New Rochelle, who says, uh, my husband and I stopped sleeping together because I got drunk one night and threw up in the bed. Uh, he hasn't been able to forgive me or forget that experience. I never treated him this badly when he was sick with COVID. Why can't he put this whole thing behind us? Guys? Uh, you know, once you got something in your head and it's hard to get out, it's going to take it's going to take a minute. And did you throw up on him in the bed? You know. Well, that, she, that, she you just probably, said in the bed. Oh, yeah. Oh, she 
Oh, she made it sound nice. I bet you it got on him. I could Just deal with you. what she said. Yeah. In the bed. She it threw up in the bed. We both naked. It got on us, Shirley. You know it did. <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> you know it. And you know when something like that happens to a person like me, oh, we're done. We're she didn't so say done. I threw up in the bed and some of it got on him. <laughs> You threw up on my 800 thread count sheets. That's what you threw up on. <laughs> and I got an issue with it. Go ahead, Junior. No, nah, that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah, it's over. I, I can she see took care of him. No, yeah, drunk and what? COVID. Come on now. What's the difference here? Drunk was and choice? COVID. What was yeah, a choice? One was a choice. <laughs> <laughs> one was an accident. <laughs> All right, coming up in 20 minutes after, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The winner of August's record-breaking 1.6 billion Mega Millions. That's right, I said 1.6 billion with a B, Mega Millions jackpot, finally came forward to claim his prize. The ticket was sold at a Publix in Neptune Beach, Florida in early August, but the winner has just come forward for what? reasons that are unknown. We don't know why. We don't know why he just came forward. The winner opted for the 783 million in cash, and the public store received a $100,000 commission. The identity of the winner is legally protected until December, and then it's up to the Florida Lottery on whether or not they will release the winner's name. Oh, I'd be so far gone. <laughs> it's right. Release oh, my name another. all you want. I don't know why we wait until October to pick this ticket up. <laughs> you got to get your <laughs> mind right before you go down there. Yeah. yeah. You get this no, money. No, no, this is 783 million. Mine right. <laughs> Mine straight. Because I don't need none of this. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't give a damn if y'all know it's Junior. I don't care. But I'm going to be gone, though. It doesn't I'm matter. As soon as we leave, I'm taking nothing. I'm going to leave the car there. But Junior, you got one a chance tonight. The Powerball. Oh, my Good gosh. Tonight. Let's it's a bill, yeah. ain't it? Oh, yeah. wow. Yep. Tonight's the draw. Yeah. Can't win if you don't play, huh? I'm going to start right. looking at property in the Netherlands and stuff. You know, I'm going to get way out there. I'm going to get way away from y'all. But no I ain't got nothing. I'm, I'm just leaving. To go where no Negro has gone before. Oh. I'm going to get way away from y'all. <laughs> All right. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after. We'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. They say Tommy moved to Mars. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather visit the scariest haunted house or would you rather ride the scariest roller coaster? Which one? Haunted house or roller coaster? Give me that roller coaster. That I'm roller coaster ain't for 60 seconds. Yeah. That roller really? that, that house, I'm going to... Nah, y'all got to cut these lights on this damn house. I can't do it. <laughs> y'all got to cut these lights on. Mm -hmm. All this hollering and people touching me. and I, mm -mm. Yeah. You walking around with your phone? Flash, yeah. Phone light, light on, everything. I, I'm trying to see. Yeah, Junior. I'll take the roller coaster. I'm with the time. I'm taking the roller coaster. I can't be in no haunted house. Nah. Uh -uh. nah yeah. I can't do that. Something about haunted houses. Haunted houses. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't like playing like that. I don't, <laughs> if I, you talking to me and I can hear you, where you going? I can't do that. <laughs> Play too yeah. much. Yeah, Dang. too much. Tommy, was that you? <laughs> no, it wasn't me. You hear that? Yeah, I heard. Well, see, I can't do that. That's too much. And stay together, you guys. Do not yeah. separate. No, 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 no. Not, not just stay together. I don't care if it's two men. We holding hands. <laughs> we holding hands. We holding hands. <laughs> okay, in a lock, yeah. dog. Let's go now. <laughs> and I, like I just saw Your it. And fingers I just saw are it. interlocked. Interlocked. They interlocked. I'm talking about. I saw the the preview for the movie The Exorcist. There's no oh. way. There's no way. Oh, Did you yeah, the her? believer, the new one. Yeah. No, I ain't never seen the first one. But I don't, oh, I don't, see after seeing the you second one, see I don't want to see the first one. No. They got a little black girl possessed. Black people yeah. get possessed. Oh hell no! <laughs> I saw that. Uh -uh. No, ain't no way. All right. Would you rather? Speaking of uh, hands, fingers interlocked and all that, Tommy, would you rather your hands tied during sex or would you rather be blindfolded during sex? Hands tied or blindfolded? Which one? I'm a, I'd rather go blindfolded. I, I, blindfolded. Don't, I don't want this tied up thing. I don't like that. that I don't want that. Uh, no. So you'd rather not be able to see what's coming? That's fine. I can yeah. feel, though. I can yeah. feel. Oh, I need yeah. to be... Yeah, and if I feel okay. something, something feel weird, I'm I'm gonna take this damn blindfold off. Yeah, That's, no. Yeah, your, your hands are free. Right? <laughs> I yeah. got my hands. Yeah, blindfolded. Junior, you yeah, want to be yeah. blindfolded? I'll be blindfolded. I can't be tied up because you know my wife work in the medical field. She got emergency. She might have to go in. I'm tied up. 
<laughs> she done left me for a uh, cold red. I, I done left. I'm now stuck. <laughs> she out my birthday suit. We can't do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Would you rather be brutally honest with your wife or would you rather your wife be brutally honest with you? Oh, well, we already know she's doing B. <laughs> you choose it or not. Yeah, yeah well, she's yeah. already doing B. Let's just, I, let's just yeah. stick with B all the way. B. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just be Good with B. Call. Good call. Yeah. All right. Would you yeah. rather you can't taste whatever you're eating or would you rather you can't smell whatever you're eating? Can't taste oh. it or you can't smell yeah. it? I, I don't want... If I can't smell it, that's fine, but I got to be able to taste it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can taste but it. But if say, you oh. smell it, you might not want to eat it. I mean, <laughs> it goes <can't> both ways. <laughs> but COVID, you couldn't taste. Yeah. Smell. Smell. <laughs> <Nail. laughs> I want to be able to taste. I don't want to lose taste. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Okay. All right. All right. That's today's round of Would You Rather. Thank you, guys. Coming up, it is our last break of the day. And we got some closing remarks from Nephew Tommy right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now. It's our last break of the day on this Monday. It's been a good day, right, guys? Oh, absolutely. It's been a great day. Had a fun. Yeah, it's been a fun yeah. day. So y'all, when we yeah. start, y'all quit thinking bad about Monday. Monday's a good thing. I like Mondays, Monday's a yeah. good thing. Yeah, Every Steve will be back tomorrow, day. of course. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That we're here, wait, that's wait, right. Wait a minute, guys. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What did he say? Mondays is a good thing. Talking about the dude that didn't come in on Monday? Yeah. <laughs> well, I ain't work, I ain't work that this, junior, huh? But I ain't worked this past weekend, too. I ain't okay. worked. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes, yeah. Carla. What you say, Tommy? <laughs> you may not come here, but you're not mad at the day. <laughs> I'm not mad at the day. I just don't want to be I here with y'all Monday. on that day. You understand? <laughs> right. right. That's a different. Right. I want all seven days. I want all <laughs> The feeling is mutual, <laughs> sir. Yes. Okay. Yes. Steve will and be back I, tomorrow, I, by the way. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, listen, Tommy, you have a brand new website and uh, initiative. It's called Don't I Cancer do. Me Out. So let's talk about that, please. So so uh, last year while I was in the hospital, I came up with a phrase called Don't Cancer Me Out. I came up with this phrase, and then I came back and had a conversation with Uncle Steve, and he was like, hey, you need to you, you need to trademark that before you even say that. You need to get that trademark. So I got the trademark, mm-hmm. Don't Cancer Me Out. And, and what I've done is I've created um, a website where you can go on that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and, and and you know what? You can go to, you know, we all have friends and loved ones that are that are going through different types of cancers. So what I've done is you can go to this website, Don't Cancer Me Out. Whatever particular cancer you want, if you want to buy a shirt, you want to buy a, a, a water bottle, you want to buy a cap, and you want to give it to a loved one or a friend, you know, for, for some encouragement that's going through, that's fighting and battling cancer. Whatever the ribbon is, for that particular cancer, that's what will be on the actual uh, product that you purchase. Merch. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So if, if yeah. you got a friend that's going through breast cancer or if you're going through liver, leukemia, um, bone cancer, testicular, per, per, every last one of them, every, one ha- every cancer has a different ribbon mm-hmm. right. and different different color ribbon. So, um, so when you purchase one, it will actually... Uh, you're actually creating it, and it'll get mailed out to you. If you want a cap, you want a shirt, you want a, you want a water bottle, whatever it is, bandana. It's it's on my website. Don't cancel me out, and that's just kind of my way. And you know, I'm trying to give once a month. My my goal is to give someone that's going through battling cancer. You know, is to be able to send them out. You know, uh, a check that'll help them go through. Because a lot of people that going through this man, and they have you know don't have the insurance uh, mm-hmm. of what it takes. To, uh, to to really pay for all of this. It's a lot to deal with, man. So, you know, I'm just trying to be helpful. I'm blessed to be able to, get, to have gone through it, gotten through it. And uh, hopefully it's, you know, if God say the same, it's gone for good. But um, here's something here's something that's uh, encouraging to, mm-hmm. uh, to the people out there. You want to yeah. take care of your loved one and give them something that's a little bit uplifting? Get them a Don't Cancel Me Out t-shirt or a water bottle or a baseball cap. What's that's the website, what Tommy? Yeah. What's the website? Don't Cancer me out. Don't I just cancer. ordered yeah. my breast cancer awareness t shirt from Don't Cancer Me Out. There you nephew. go. You? Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah, I love it, Tommy. Bringing awareness and supporting and people back. that are, oh man, supporting yeah. the survivors. Man, great, too. You know, the survivors. And, and, out and there. Be each month we're trying to spotlight, you know, a cancer survivor. And that's what you're supposed to do. When you're blessed, you're supposed to bless others. And you're doing exactly exactly that. So congratulations on that. And we're so glad because a year ago, you're right. 
It was scary. It, it was scary. <laughs> yeah, for a year it? ago. But yeah, but God brought you on through. Amen to that. Amen. 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 So mm-hmm. yeah. I just, I just, you know, man, I, I still go back and get my checkups. And, you know, when you go through uh-huh. MD Anderson uh, Hospital in Houston, Texas, and you're walking through and you just see, you know, the walk that people are walking and you know what they're going through. And you're like, oh, man, I know, I know this road. Mm-hmm. And uh, to be able to get checked up every so often, everything's still clear, everything's still negative. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, but when you see the people, man, you, they need something uplifting. They need something encouraging. So yeah. I, I tried to come up with something. And, my big dog said, hey, don't you say don't cancel me out on this radio at all till you get a trademark. All and right. his lip was hanging. When, his lip was hanging when he said, you know, with his, lip hanging, with his lip yeah. hanging, you know, he's serious about it. Yeah. He's serious, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. So go to go to uh, don'tcancelmeout.com and get your loved one or your friend that's going and battling cancer and you want to give them some uh, uplifting, an uplifting gift. There it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. There it is. You're a miracle. Got you. A miracle. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. That's Speaking cancer. of that, Tommy, all this the Saturday, I will be in Chicago, Sister Strut, yeah. annual breast cancer awareness walk. Okay. Uh-huh. Yes, it's going down at the Croc Center. And if you want more information, you can go to V103.com, our home station in yes. Chicago. We all know October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, don't cancel me out. I'm trying to wear my shirt. Hi. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm there sure you you'll go. get it in time. Yeah. Hopefully. Well, hopefully. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure she get it in time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if not, I can rock it don't during the month of October. Mm-hmm. No right. worries. Right. 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 No that's worries. right. Yeah. That's right. Well, that's a great thing, okay. Tommy, for mm-hmm. you to come up with that and want to give back and all of that. We love that. Thank you. Yep. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you. Thank That's you. That's fantastic. Yeah, and right tell now. Chicago I'm coming too, uh, Carl. I'll be there about, about a couple of weeks behind you. I'll be right on over there. Yes, the speaking of that, let me get about, let me get about, mm. let's see. Mm. How many tickets? Look at the time, child. Look at the time. <laughs> I'm thinking six. Oh, we have six. time for this. I'm thinking six. <laughs> six. <laughs> and Shirley, you got friends and loved ones in Shy. Oh, my brother Fish. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> Tell Fish I'm going to be at the Airy Crown with a whole bunch of funny people. <laughs> Shout out to my brother Fish. <laughs> yeah, Matter of fact, tell Fish to make me a cake oh, and yeah, drop it off make... at the hotel. That boy yeah, can make a cake. Can make... God, <laughs> yes he can. <laughs> I will. Nice, nicely mm-hmm. done. That's all. Nice. There you have it. We good. All right. In the words of my uncle, talk to God. He would love to hear from you. Until tomorrow, be in peace. How about that? For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 